So when you open up Pocket 3D and you get everything set up, your base is started and you've connected to your rover, if they're talking and everything drives, your GPS icon in the bottom left will be green. With it green, you know you're connected and you're ready to go to work. In this project, what I can do is go to Data and Control. Your first step is to localize your project. When you go into Control, you're going to see this is the place where you can add all your control points. So when a surveyor goes out and sets those nails in the ground, those coordinates are what you're going to need to actually set, start this project. When I hit Add, I can add them in manually and then type in the north, the east, and the elevation as well as name it. I would definitely use the convention of naming it exactly after the control point the surveyor set to avoid confusion. Once you have all these control points in, your next step is to localize. The localizing procedure is essentially taking that project, which we assume is like a bed sheet floating in the wind, and you go out on the ground and nail that into the ground using those control points. Um, without a localization, you can have a little bit of adjustment from left to right or from center out of grade variation. That localization is going to tighten it up and guarantee that all grades match across the project. To localize, when you do reach that nail and you set up your rover on that point, you're going to click it in the screen and hit edit. And then from that point forward, you go to GPS and then you would hit measure. What you're doing is you're taking a GPS coordinate of a latitude and longitude and tying it in with a northing and easting. And the software behind the scenes is going to calculate that equation and tie it in together. Um, next step, once it finishes measuring, you're going to use horizontal and use vertical. So always make sure you have both boxes checked. Otherwise, it's not going to tie in and keep that point as solid. If you do finish the localization and then for any reason one point goes red, that means that point was out of tolerance as far as the software was concerned. You have one of three options. We usually recommend double checking the edit of those points to see that you typed in that point correct. If you did mistype or typed an extra zero for whatever reason, make sure you adjust it and get that guaranteed. Your next step is you can go remeasure that point. If you notice on your range pole, there's a little level bubble in there. More often than not, somebody's not looking from top down on that bubble. They weren't perfectly centered. And that can cause almost a two inch difference from top down from seven feet up. And then your third point, if you know that you typed them incorrectly and you were dead center in that bubble, you more than likely need to call your surveyor because this software is saying that those coordinates on the ground aren't matching up those GPS coordinates as far as how far apart they are. The next step is you bring into your surface, double check that you have one activated. Some projects have multiple surfaces. More often than not, if you get a model built, they have it built to finish grade and you only have one surface. But keep that in mind because if there are multiple surfaces, if you have the wrong one selected, you will have incorrect grades or you won't be able to check grade at all. And most surfaces, if you have multiple ones, it's more often than not, it's because it's built in phases. A project that's you know, more than 100, 200, maybe 400 acres can be phased out, phase one through four. If you're in phase four of a project with phase one surface selected, when you go to do grade check, it's going to say out of design. Um, that just means that that project doesn't have a model under you, so it's not going to be able to tell you where to go. After that is layers. Layer manipulation is very important as far as checking grades. Uh, it's a whole lot easier to select a line if only one line is there to be selected. If I right click in here and with your data collector, you would hold your finger down and then you would just hit select all. If I tap one green checkbox, they all become unchecked. If I go back out, you notice the screen's blank. That means all the layers have been deselected and then now I can go in here and pick which layer I'm pretending to work on today. If today I want to do back a curb or if I want to just do my elevations for my pads, I can just select those. For this one, we're going to do the 3D back a curb and then what's going to show up is all my curb line throughout the project. So now when I go to stake out a poly line, the only one I can grab is my back a curb. I can't accidentally select my flow line or my edge of pavement or accidentally, you know, the water line going along with it. In this project, if you notice, you have everything in here, but if you're trying to focus on a specific spot, your gray icons in here are all about your zoom functions. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like an iPad you can't, or an iPhone. You can't scroll in and scroll out by pinching the screen. You physically have to hit the plus sign to zoom in and the minus sign to zoom out. This box in the middle, if I click that, I can click and drag a box around my project and then focus in on that specific area. And then that little back arrow, tapping that will just go back to the last zoom screen I had as far back as when I opened Pocket 3D. And then the infinity symbol on the last one, tapping that puts the entire project into view. So if you have multiple projects in the same one, by hitting infinity, you'll notice because it's going to zoom out too far. On the far right, you have the eye. When it turns blue, it's because something has been selected. If you tap it when it's blue, it'll tell you what you have clicked. Right now, what I have selected is control point 9017, 
It'll also give you a description of it, and it'll tell me the northing, the easting, the elevation, and what latitude and longitude it has. And then in the far right is your cursor icon. In the bottom right, if you're a green man, we call it the running man. That's just going to keep you centered on the screen. So if I zoom in, it's going to zoom in on the crosshair. That crosshair is your rover, not your data collector. Uh, I've seen many instances where somebody picks up the data collector and walks away and he says it's not following me. That's because he left the rover at the side of his truck and it's still there. The next one that you would concern yourself with would be under cursor, it'd be pan, which turns into the hand. That allows you to put your finger on the screen and actually scroll across the project, kind of look at different areas. And then the only other one would be cursor and then your select. Your selection tool turns into a crosshair, which will then allow me to actually select something on the project. That comes in handy because you must select something before you can do a stakeout. If you're trying to stake out poly lines, curb lines, back of curb, building pads, you have to select that line first and then you can tell the software, hey, go find that line for me. Uh, until then, you can't, it doesn't know what to do, so you actually have to use this to your advantage to tell the software, that's what I want, show me where to go to get there.